Welcome to the Free Will Science and Religion Podcast. I'm Chuck Slattery, and I'm here with George Ortega, Chandler Klebs, and David Joseph. And today, on the topic of free will, we're going to be talking about what the message is that we want to get across to people um, for this whole understanding that we don't have free will. And uh, I'm going to start out with George. George, what's your take on this? Okay, one, I think, you know, people are afraid. I, I, I hear this so many times at, at the, the meetups I host. People are afraid that, like, if, if the world understands that absolutely nothing is up to us, chaos is going to ensue. Civilization is going to collapse because everybody's going to say to themselves, to everyone else, listen, you can't blame me for anything. I can do whatever I want, and I'm completely blameless because I don't have free will. So why, why won't chaos ensue, George? Well, my understanding, partly it's because we don't have a free will. In other words, we're hardwired, <laughs> biologically hardwired to seek pleasure, avoid pain. Not just as individuals, but as collectives, as a society, as a world. So it's not going to like fall into chaos and, and all that because we're not going to let it. Because like if it were, everybody would be suffering the outcome of that. So, so there would be preventative, uh, preten- pre- preventative things in place that would, cause, well, that would prevent uh, people from um, causing problems in the world is what you're saying. Well, yeah. I mean I think the same rules and laws we have now – but but I think um, implemented with so much more compassion and understanding and intelligence. Chandler, what do you think? Do you, what's the message that uh, you think is important for this free will topic? Well, the way I look at it is I, I think it will actually make society more peaceful and compassionate. And I think uh, there's that people's fears that society is going to collapse are completely unjustified. Because there, there's – we live in a world where the majority of people do believe in free will and yet there's still tons of problems. And I think the understanding the causes of those problems is the message, the message of causality or determinism that needs to be um, important. You know that, That's the message I want to get across to people because there are going to be people who don't really understand that free will is an illusion. But just by understanding the causes of things, they automatically become more compassionate, understanding. They become more knowledgeable about how to make a better world, even if they don't get that nothing is up to us. So, so what, you're saying that people come, become more compassionate. Why would they become more compassionate based on this? Basically, I could, for example, I can explain it. You know, I used to be really angry and hateful towards people who disagreed with me, whether it was about, you know, abortion or, or they believe some religion that's stupid. And I'm like, well, why are they stupid? And, and I realized, wait, it's not people's fault that they're stupid. <laughs> and, you know, and, and so what happened was is I no longer viewed any person as um, being the self-cause of anything wrong with them. And what happens is now I just – I think, well, people need help. I think of, you know, mental or emotional disorders being the same as any physical disease, realizing that that person didn't choose it. And so I may fear people, but at that deep level, I no longer hate them anymore. Right. So so we recognize that there are people are a product of their circumstances and and that they couldn't have had different circumstances. Yes, and that is the number one thing that it changes and where, where the benefit comes from. And in fact, if it, if it didn't have a benefit, I wouldn't even be doing this podcast with you guys. But it does have that benefit, and you know what? It has no negative effects that I can see so far. Because – it and you know, people act like that people will all turn into murderers and rapists and they'll cheat on tests or whatever if people – understand that they don't have free will but the 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 people can't aren't going to do something that they don't already want to do anyway you know (laughs) right now david you've been on in in these a few of these podcasts um what's your take on it how do you feel about this whole free will thing and do you think it's uh, an important uh message that has to be uh brought about it's it's, it's probably one of the the most important messages that, that i can think of i mean we live in a an incredibly egotistic society and I just think um, 
if we can get people to recognize that free will is just an illusion, then that kind of paves the way for more compassion, more understanding. And that's, that's a good point. So, so the whole egoism thing, you're, you're, you're thinking people are going to become less egoist uh, based on uh, this understanding, correct? Uh, I, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Definitely. Now, George, what do you think about some of these studies that, that come out um, saying that, uh, you know, they, they, that people who learn that they don't have free will or, 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 or they don't really learn it, to tell you the truth, but, but what do you think about some of these studies that come out to say uh, they, they might cheat more, for example? I think they're – actually, I reviewed some of those studies for a book that I published um, last year, and there is – they're both – Basically, their methodology is bad, is wrong, and, and their conclusions are biased. For example, in one of the studies, they had two groups. They told one group that, you know, your, your behavior, you're nothing but a pack of neurons, quote unquote. You know, your behavior is completely determined. Right. The other group, they told, well, you know, like, you have a free will that allows you to do moral decisions. Okay, so like, so in other words, like with with the no free will group, they first they divested them of their like personhood, their humanity by just like referring to them to a thing, whatever, and they didn't include include any kind of like morality relevant, um, you know, material. And the 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 free will group was was primed was primed, and priming is a psychological you know mechanism for getting people to think a certain way with the morality construct as part of the definition. So basically, I think the, the research is just like, it's flawed, it's biased, it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's being conducted by people who believe in free will and have understood now that they've lost that debate, so now they're trying to approach this through different means. Right, right. And, and what, what I find in it is that the, they kind of lead the people to... Um, more fatalistic notions of uh, not having free will rather than deterministic notions. For example, there, uh, part of it might be uh, that they're, a, they're just random chance. Random chance is a part of their no free will scheme, basically, or, or, or um, that not that they're a product of their environment, but that they couldn't, they, they, um, there's, the future is set no matter what what they think or say or do, um, so that that would be a, like a more of a fatalistic notion. It has has less to do with the causality of their conscious happenings going on. Um, and the other thing I would say is uh, that these people that are being uh, studied, they aren't true determinists. They don't, the reading them reading an article doesn't convert them to be truly um, an understand, have an understanding of the lack of free will. So basically what, you're, what they're doing is they're causing confusions within the minds of people who think they have free will. <laughs> so it's this temporary that's confusion that's causing the problems, not really the disbelief in free will. What would you say about that? I think that's a great point. Yeah, they, they, like you were saying, they describe determinism or the lack of free will in a fatalistic um, perspective. And they, they just don't – they don't – another thing they don't do, they, they, as part of the description for not having free will, they don't make the very important point that like we don't have a free will, but not having a free will doesn't give us license to do what we want because that's a, that's a crucial a crucial understanding as part of understanding that, that, that we don't have a free will. Chandra, why, why doesn't it give us license to do what we want? Yeah, that, yeah, I was just going to say about this. Basically, if fatalism were true, that things happen regardless of our actions, well, then that would give us a license to do whatever we want. But because the, we cause effects by our actions, that is why there are things we want to do that we really shouldn't be doing. And so I view determinism as, as a view that um, promotes good behavior actually under this understanding and that we you know and and i don't really think that we have a license to do whatever whatever we want i mean we may be basically we don't do something unless we want to do it or unless we're threatened you know but still i really think that this will lead um moral people into causing 
good things. And I suppose it, some might say it could be used in the reverse way, that some people can use the knowledge of determinism to say do evil things and, well, you know, brainwash people with commercials and, and sell their products to them, which is already being done because people do understand that people can be psychologically primed without their awareness through their unconscious. Mm. That you, you bring up some good points there. What would you say about people who would use uh, the lack of free will as an excuse? Uh, so that's, a, that's, I think, a fear of a lot of people is they think that, oh, if people say they don't have free will, they're going to use it as an excuse to do bad things. Like they want to do bad things and they're just using it as an excuse so they can. What do you guys think about that? Well, you know, I have a counter argument for that as a matter of fact because there are those people who they do something wrong and they say, well, who, well, who cares if I did something wrong because God gave me free will and I can do whatever I want. I have the freedom to choose. <laughs> That's true. That's true. What do you think yeah. about that, George? Trick, I think the other answer to that is we're not going to let them get away with it. I mean right. like, you know, let's say, you know, by some, you know – Amazing – let's say tomorrow everybody understood that free will is an illusion. OK? So like pretty soon after that, people would be trying to use that as an excuse and they'd learn pretty quickly that no, everybody else wouldn't – they wouldn't even let themselves do that. You know, because like for example, some, some person might say, oh, I don't have free will. I can stay in bed all day. I can just like do nothing. You know, they, they'd learn very quickly that boredom and lack of whatever, lack of motivation would, would prevent them from doing that. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole. Oh, I'm gonna stay in bed. You know, if if I don't have free will, why would I even get get out of bed? Deal. <laughs> That's kind of strange thinking. I mean, just try to stay in bed all day and <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll learn quick. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, David, what's your take on um? And what we've just been talking about regarding um, uh, people using using free will as an excuse or, or anything like that. Do you have any ideas on that? Um, I would say it's always it's always good to keep in mind the, the difference between an excuse and a reason. You know that there's reasons why we do things, and um, you know quite often we don't get to choose those reasons. If people can understand that, then maybe they can lean towards looking at the root causes for certain behaviors and certain actions. Okay. And uh, what other messages do you think uh, this lack of free will will bring out in people? Well, just going um, from what David just said, you know, under the free will belief, as we as adults, like when we when some of us do things that are wrong. You know, the explanation is, well, they did it of their free will. And and in a lot of ways, it just stops there. You know, that free will explains their behavior. Whereas, like, to the extent the world understands that, no, there are reasons, there are causes for why, why they did what they did, then that will motivate us as a society to invest more of our time and our resources into conditioning our children in much better ways with the full knowledge that what we put into them, the knowledge we put into them, the instruction, the guidance is going to be how they'll turn out as adults. In other words, like the, a free will believer will say, well, it doesn't matter what you teach these kids because like as adults, they're going to have the free will to, to just like completely ignore everything we teach them. So like understanding that we don't have a free will means that we give much more importance to, to how we treat these kids and how, do we, how we guide them. Hmm. How we treat them. Um, in the criminal system, would you say that uh, rehabilitation should be increased or you think that, that um, it's, 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 too much, it's too costly to, to increase uh, such things? Chandler, Chandler, why don't you handle that? Okay, what was that question again? You know, in, in, the, in the criminal system, you have you know, you know, people that, that obviously um, commit crimes for, for whatever reasons, whatever reasons uh, causally lead to that situation. Um, and we have deterrence, obviously, but let's say um, we also want to rehabilitate people. And, and, and in, in prison currently, there's, there's some rehabilitative aspects, but I, I'd say there needs to be more of that. Um, would you say... 
would you say there needs to be more of that? And if so, uh, do you think it's worth the cost? Um, so, so uh, obviously, when, whenever we have to, we, when we have a change in, in any st- type of system, like the justice system or anything like that, we have to incur some kind of a cost for it. So, you think you think uh, um, these changes are worth the cost? Well, I think that there needs to be a rehabilitation focus. That there needs to be more focus on that. Because at the end of the day, my question is, are there nonviolent solutions? Are there solutions for eliminating criminal behavior without just killing every single criminal? It, there may, and, and ultimately, I think it's better to prevent it, prevent the kinds of teaching and society that causes these people into crime in the first place. But for the people who are already criminals, there's much debate on that. Some people is like, oh, we should just kill them all, give them the death penalty. But I find that that's almost always done from a retribution feeling that those people deserve it somehow. And yeah, I, I – go yeah. ahead, Channel. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I just find that this message that people deserve um, things is the one that's completely shot down by this no free will understanding. And so that – yeah, it's very important, and that – and some – a lot of people would disagree with me being against the death penalty, but I have my reasons why I want to find rehabilitation for these people. Yeah, and there's another reason why this whole free will construct is very important to rehabilitation and how much we spend on it. Basically, with the free will belief comes um, the the – the um, the indictment by most people that these people in prison they're horrible people they did what they did of their free um, will so they don't deserve for example a college education when people who didn't commit crimes don't get colleges they don't deserve good things whereas like a lot of times reason will tell us that if you educate the um, the prisoner while they're in prison you know if you give them job job skills training skills that you know that make them better people. They're going to be less likely when they get out to to um, to commit crimes again. So it's like it's this belief in free will that doesn't allow us to use very effective, positive reinforcing um, mechanisms in prison. You know, because again, like people are under the free will belief, people say, "Well, these people don't deserve it." Whereas, whereas the truth is, like you know, that's I think the very least we should be doing for them because from the recognition that they're just extremely unlucky, that, you know, what they did was really not up to them. Yeah, you know, George, here's the deal. It, the way people handle things is they, is they punish the sick by not giving them the cure. <laughs> it sounds stupid. Yeah, and, and then that affects us. In other words, like, and because of that, you know, the criminals, I think on some level, I think on some level they realize that, you know, that they, that, you know, if, if somebody was like um, born in an inner city Whatever they understand the injustice of, of the society, they understand that the that the deck was stacked against them from the day they were born. So they they kind of like understand that they're basically fighting a moral fight against an unjust society. So like when, when what do you? Go oh, ahead. go ahead, George. No, yeah. So just basically when when so basically I think you know they they're resisting our punishment because they they see like that, that it's an unjust system. Some people, when they hear this rehabilitation word, they get concerned that that um, that we're going to take these things to a more extreme. Like, uh, for example, you, if you ever saw the movie Clockwork Orange, that you know it was some kind of conditioning type situation where where uh, the person is forced to watch you know crazy things while. Uh, while well, being injected with something that that's painful, so he associates that pain with uh, uh, the negative or the, the 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 things that he's doing that are bad. So, so what do you think about people that think people that we might take things to a more crazy level on this? Do you think that, that that's a possibility, or do you think that that probably won't happen? I think it's the exact opposite. In other words, like under the free will paradigm, we'd be much more likely to do that because we would be feeling that they deserve that pain, the pain of that reconditioning. But to the extent that we understand that what they did wasn't wasn't up to them, we'd be we'd be actually more likely to kind of like you know introduce interventions that um, 
that maybe change them, but change them not from the standpoint of punishing them, but from the standpoint of rewarding them for new behaviors. Right. So, so you're thinking it's more of a reward uh, uh, system that would probably end up happening. Yeah, and, and like as psychology is understood for decades, just like, psychology is understood for decades. For example, that um, that violence, you know, is is not a, a a positive violence in the media is not positive for people. I mean, like not everybody becomes a murderer and stuff because of it, but like it's just not. They've understood this in various ways. In that same um, way, they've understood that um, positive reinforcement works better than negative reinforcement at molding human behavior. So like so absolutely like w without the free will belief we'd be much more able as a society to implement much more effectively and that that would be less crime that would that would help everyone. David, you have any take on this uh, criminal system uh, res question? Um, I don't know. I think people kind of uh, they're kind of halfway there. The fact that they they can see a victim of crime and if that victim goes on to have some kind of uh, uh, negative emotional response or something, they can kind of look back and say, well, that person was a victim of crime. That's the reason. And the problem is that they can't seem to apply that to the criminal, the actual person who who kind of, you know, contributed to, to that victim's behavioral problems. Hmm. You know, so they, they just have to kind of step back a little bit further and kind of take a bit more into account. But they're kind of halfway there because they do it with the victim already. It's just instead of shouting for hang, hang the victim, perhaps they should be shouting for um, hang the root causes of whatever created the criminal. Okay, l let's imagine, uh, this is for all you guys, let's imagine that the world has changed. Uh, at least 90% of the world's population now understand this, this important fact that we don't have free will. You know, there might be a few people here and there that are still stuck in the Stone Age, <laughs> but... but for the most part, everybody understands this this uh, this this knowledge. They 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 understand that we don't have we couldn't have done otherwise. People aren't to blame, and all this. How will the world change, Chandler? How will the world change? Well, for one thing, I think. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there would be so many changes because because all of a sudden. You know, th there would be less blame. I really think there would be less blame and there would be much more peaceful society in general if people uh, got this understanding. Another side effect of this is there would, there would be basically no religion. And here's what I mean. At least not the type of Christian like, well, you're punished for not believing or doing the right things. You know what I mean? Because that's that's based off of free will. That's based on the idea that you deserve some kind of punishment or reward based on what you do. And I think the whole concept needs to be understood that reward and punishment are part of that causal process. That when we're rewarded for something, well, we tend to um, want to do more of it to get that reward. And when we're punished, we do less of it. And... And so I think a system of rewards and punishments in everyday practical society um, is what then will drive the behavior of people rather than this whole idea of reward or punishment after you're dead. <laughs> George, what do you think? I think, all right, along with that, um, we are conditioned from a very early age to think in terms of us and them, a very competitive kind of a culture we, we have. And like a lot, one of the things that goes along with that is like, if we win, then someone has to lose. If they win, then we lose. This is what like a lot of sports are about and all. So we, we carry that kind of mindset into our personal relationships, into, into all of our relationships. And what happens with the free will belief is the like, you know, when, when one person of two people does something wrong, the free will belief encourages this competition, this, this conflict. You know, in other words, like either the other person is going to win by getting away with it or you're going to win by not allowing them to get away with it. Now, what, as we shift from this, you know, harmful free will perspective to the understanding, again, like let's say tomorrow everybody, 90 percent of people understand that free will is an illusion, then – Instead of these two people, instead of people like 
going at each other, trying to like accuse each other of, of doing something wrong or of, of not understanding that what was done was not wrong and all. All of a sudden, people are on the same side. People are like on the side. Let's say somebody accuses uh, another person of doing something wrong. The person is not going to feel, you know, indicted or guilty or or have to go into some kind of self, you know, defense mechanism, you know, to protect themselves. The person's going to like be much more empathetic toward the person that's accusing them of doing something. And then both people on the same side, you know, as a team and are, are going to try to figure out why is this happening? Why, you know, what, what is the actual answer without this distracting, this very distracting of dynamic of blame and, and, and trying to win. So basically it, it, it puts people on the same team is what you're saying. <laughs> Absolutely. What's your take, Joseph, uh, David? Uh, I think George and Chandler have uh, said it said it quite well. Um, I would just add that you know being more focused on solutions would would be a great thing. Right, right, exactly. So so people will start looking at the causality of the situation. They won't blame people fundamentally, though they will still deter people if they have to. And uh, yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> um, what else? What else? Uh, what other messages? Uh, this, this free will uh, understanding carry with it. Is there anything else that you guys can think of? I think there's a challenge that there's before us in that, like, when people, you know, understand that they don't have a free will, it's very much, it's very much like being a puppet or a robot or computer. You know, basically nothing is up to us. We're just going along for the ride. And while, while we kind of, like, are comfortable with that, many, many people aren't. So we have to come up with ways... Of, of like helping them accept that kind of like in the same way that people were helped to accept that we evolved from lower life forms. Yeah, okay. you know, that's a, that's a big blow to some people. Like, like for example, I think part of the reason that people I encounter are like, you know, resistant to the idea of evolution is they don't want to think that they're the great, 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 you know, what I, grandson of a bacteria or virus or a worm or something. Now, I find that view sort of appealing, but most people don't. And some people like about the robot or puppet thing, like they don't want to feel like a puppet and... How how in the world do we get people to be okay with being a puppet? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, they don't. They don't. The, the the whole lack of control. People can't give up. They they just their psychology is just so embedded with this idea that they are the masters of their own universe. That that is the thing that we, I think we have to be careful about because people, you know, uh, they just they won't accept it offhand we have to we have to transition them like like george says into this idea yeah you know for example the the concept of self control you know is a very big thing and i've noticed that self control is always used in the context like you have self control if you're not doing what you want <laughs> and i've never quite understood that you know that's a big part of like Christianity, I know, and and in general into society, I suppose. What what does it mean, self control? What like for example, a person who is you know doing good, and a person who is doing bad, do they both have equal self control? I mean, you know, the whole concept falls apart because they use self control to be something like, well, you want to do this, but you're controlling yourself and doing the opposite of what you want to do. And to me, it's, it, it always seemed like like the only kind of control that anyone can have is being able to do what they actually want to do. <laughs> right. And, and what they want to do comes about through means that they don't have any control over. <laughs> so, exactly. That's so what's so funny yeah. about it. <laughs> right. Right. Um, what time? Uh, how much more time? We've do we got have, about George? forty-five seconds. That's what I thought. <laughs> so, uh, what, what else do you guys have? Any, anything quick? You quickly want to say here within the next forty-five seconds? Nothing in that short of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I guess that's it for the show, and uh, it was a good show. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's excellent. We got to keep again. This is what we have to do. We got to find ways to get people to like to feel good about like you know not having free will. That's that's the challenge. <laughs> 
Yeah, and we can we can always just try to think of more ideas about how to get the message across or and why the message is important. Um, and yeah, that that sounds good. So um, thank you for listening to the Free Will Science and Religion podcast.